he is totally taken with the power of <laughs> large scale sculpture. Do you have any idea who is talking to you? Yeah. 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 How, How are you? you are? How are you, sweetheart? Good and, to see and you. And they still stick around. Isn't that wonderful? <laughs> I don't get it. Well, <laughs> so he then becomes a, a, a great devotee. He was one of the great ambassadors for art. He would give lectures, he would give chocolate, he wouldn't take lumps of clay and he would sculpt them before people in a very accessible way. And he started what was known as the Midway Studios, which was off the Midway facade of the University of Chicago, which was made out of a big old, what was an old barn, because he is creating large scale sculpture that can be placed in public places. The, the idea was the value of uh, having publicly accessible sculpture. So he became an advocate for it. And uh, he then established, he had a great number of assistants who came to work with him and who then went on to be uh, well-known sculptors in their own right. Now, when he would get a project to do a sculpture, he would start out with a little soft clay model like this. And it's just a little like modeling clay like you have at school. And this is Laredo Taft's version of sketching. So you make a little clay model and you try things out on them. Um, here is, this is for actually a monument that you, if you go to Oregon, Illinois, the statue of Blackhawk. This is an early study for Blackhawk. This little figure is for the Fountain of Time, which is what we're talking about in terms of this area. This is for a cemetery monument in, uh, in Jackson, uh, Michigan. And this is the preliminary studies. But one of the great works that he did is the Fountain of Time in Chicago. Now, he did many great works across the country. Uh, one of his early ones is the Fountain of the Great Lakes that you can see on the side of the Art Institute. But one that I think is really takes a big step in terms of redefining the idea of public art is what was known as the Fountain of Time. It is at the, uh, just west of Cottage Grove Avenue, uh, at the end of the Midway Plaisant. So it's like the end of the great landscape Midway. And what it essentially is, is a procession of human figures that represent all different aspects that you could imagine of humanity in terms of their origins, in terms of human passions and emotions, all in constant procession. And standing is the figure of time, immovably standing, watching the endless procession. Some of the figures are actually based on people who worked at the Midway Studios, and if you know where to look, you will see Taft himself and his assistant. There are things in the sculpture that in kind of, I would say, an era of when this was planned in the second decade of the um, 20th century, when there are prudish attitudes. In fact, Taft got all kinds of flack for the female figures in the Fountain of the Great Lakes. But this one, there are people, like there is a couple in a passionate embrace that's not just some little kiss. <laughs> and it is like they are morphing out of the earth. And so it goes from this mass, and you will see a personality to every one of these figures, just like there's a personality to every person here, and representing their, it's all in the sculpture. They looked at different ways to create, it's a, it's a massive sculpture, uh, and they tried a new experimental material for sculpture, and that's cast concrete. They got a man named John J. Early, who was a master of formulating concrete, who took this on. Early also did things like doing the concrete for the Baha'i Temple and others. And would do it, and he would actually put quartz crystals into the concrete so that it would give it a sparkle and create this amazing, so for this kind of fluid, sort of design to have that kind of fluid of these people morphing out. To create this, he did little models like this out of clay, and then to see how it looked, see this? He would make a full-size plaster model of the sculpture, and then of the whole piece, and then assemble it on the site to see what it looked like. 
and then adjust it to suit. So it wasn't just kind of going by what, to making sure that it effectively worked. So um, this would be the fountain of time. There was to be a counterpart sculpture that was supposed to go against what's now the Metro tracks. It was originally the Illinois Central tracks. And uh, that was the fountain of creation. And that one never happened. And uh, it was to go against the train embankment. And of course, people used to always gripe about the old Illinois Central trains, just like they'll make gripe about Metro today. And uh, Taft said that he wanted to put it at the other end. He says, everybody has something against the Illinois Central. Why don't I do that too?